Welcome to the Crazy Down Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I'm like the explosive one. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. <clears throat> How would you like to retire at 45 years old? Um, sure. I mean, I guess. Can I, can I retire now? I mean, sure. You can uh, retire anytime you want, I guess. Hell yeah, dude. I'm retired. So, there's a guy. It was a Japanese man. He retired at 45. By living frugally for 21 years. So from the time he was 24 to 45, he li lived frugally. He saved over 679,000 U.S. dollars by drastically uh, cutting costs, uh, including just like eating rice and vegetables every day and giving up air conditioning. Really? I don't know if I'd give up 21 years of air conditioning to retire early. I mean, he retired 20 years early. 20 years without air conditioning? For 20 years of... This is... Okay, so look. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the real question. What if he dies tomorrow gets hit by a car? I mean, you know, you never know the future, obviously. Right, right, right. Um, But here's the real issue is... Is the amount of money that he saved up going to give him like any of the luxuries that he was unable to afford during the times where he was saving. That's what I was thinking. It's like, are you just going to live the same life for 21 more years? Yeah. Cause I don't want to live. Like if I go 20 years without uh freaking uh, air conditioning, I need 20 years of crank as much that air bitch conditioning up. as I want. Yeah. Crank it up. I, I need wear, 20 years I of that. I want to wear us two sweatshirts at all times just to like, cause it's so cold in my house. Yeah, and I'm not eating rice. We eat meat every day from now on. I've been eating healthy all this time. I need a well, pizza. Here's the other piece of that. What's that? So he ended up totally saving nine. It was said about nine hundred seventeen thousand U.S. dollars, one hundred thirty-five million yen. Uh, <laughs> he had, he even wrote a book on money saving tips, which helped generate more income for him too. So what's happening right now is the yen is crashing. So yeah, now, I know, dude. So now we the money buy. that he saved up in yen is oh, not worth nearly as much as it was when he much. saved it. Oh, he should. So he said, "It said uh, if the yen keeps depreciating, I'll never achieve financial freedom. What what all I've been working for these twenty one years? It's all meaningless. It's all so tragic." Yikes! So like, homeboy gives up a ton of stuff for two decades to retire early, and then his currency collapses, and he basically has to go back to work anyways. <sighs> That is kind of crazy that, uh, like, and that just goes to show you is that that is how money operates. That's because it, it's all about faith in that in that money and that dollar. I or mean, that we're lucky yen. enough that the dollar is like the world reserve currency for now. Yeah, but even still, man, it's not a sure thing. You like uh, so many people like to think about it. Billionaires spend their entire lives collecting this one specific type of currency, but. It don't take much for that infrastructure to fall. Well, I mean, think about what a hundred dollars bought you five years ago and what it buys you now. I mean, it, I mean, just in general, it's always it's always worth less. I mean, look to the every man, yes. To the every man, yes. To these people who are actually controlling the prices, I would say, like the people who actually put in a lot of time and effort. <laughs> I hate to say, like, billionaires put more time and effort into getting money, but kind of they do. Um, <laughs> I mean. Kind of they do. You know, it, like, sure, there's some uh, some practices that they use that we, we probably wouldn't use ourselves. But to think that you can put your entire life into just, like, accumulating money and then the government falls or there's a shortage of some sort or they decide to change, like, taxes or... It's just like so many different things can take it to the point where that money means nothing. It's like the like the stock market, you know, from like you do stock markets and shit. Like a stock can be great and then the next day it can be nothing. The same goes for the money we put in our pocket. Yeah. Which is why people have been adopting cryptos and stuff of that nature, trying yeah, to figure same, out a I mean, obviously ancillary. the same thing happens with crypto, so Yeah. It's it's all a gamble. Um it's all very much a gamble. It's it's insane that um, but the the currency we use every day is not supposed to be a gamble. It's supposed to be a sure thing, right? I mean, ideally, that's the point of it. When I go into the grocery store and I give that lady $100 off of my card for groceries, she is not concerned that that money is going to not be accepted wherever it goes next or HEB or whatever. It's not going to be concerned. Right. But 
if China and Russia were to invade, what does that do to our dollar? I mean, if they took over the U.S., there'd be no dollar left. What do you do with it? And then our dollar means nothing. Yeah. Not saying is that that's what that's what's going to happen or that's what I want to happen, but it's just it's it's a it's a possibility. I'm freaking seeing like the uh, Doctor Strange a thousand permutations. Yeah, yeah. Forest through the trees. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you're seeing the forest through the trees. No, man, it's 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 really crazy. Uh, it's just because you know, even like we've talked about before, like. It used to be like, you need a million dollars, like, you'd be good. And now, like, a million dollars is like a baby millionaire. You can't really, like, yeah, you could retire on a million dollars. But, like, you ain't living that comfortably. If, you were, if you're in your, say, your 40s and you have one million dollars and you try to retire and live for 40 more years, you ain't living like a rich person. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's inflation. I guess that's what he's experienced in his country, too, is that inf- the, the yen isn't worth as much, as much. But the yen crashing is different than inflation. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because the, the dollar is not crashing, but we're still experiencing a lot of inflation. Yeah, because they're printing more money. Yeah. That's, the, that's where I'm trying to differentiate. It's like his problems are caused by, like, you know, uh, fiscal policy of his government. Yeah, like the, the actual country is having a problem. Where inflation in this country is this kind of like uh, aggressive capitalism? I shouldn't I shouldn't say aggressive. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Um, when a company uses certain ideas that would be like not good. What do you mean? What am I? Nefarious? Not cannibalistic, but you know. I just said nefarious. So nefarious that's... is close, but that's not the word I'm looking for. Either way, they're using uh, evil ways to drive up the prices because there's no reason that rent prices should be what it is. There's no reason grocery prices should be what they are. Like it just, it really doesn't make sense, but prices are going up all around because a lot of companies agree prices should go up now. Well, right, 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 right. Yeah. We well, need once more they money. Go up, they don't come back down, you know, or it's funny. They're like, we don't have any choice. We have to raise them. And then they're hit record, record, record breaking profit. And you're like, that doesn't that doesn't make sense. Exactly. How are you having record breaking profits, but the prices need to go up? Like that's yeah. Like you can still have record breaking profits, but get it through earning more customers, earning more clientele. I don't know, man. There's just there's a, a way to do things that it's not well, necessarily. Well, yeah, it's all like well, it's in it. shrinkflation. Like you know, what I mean, you get a smaller box for the same price with less product. That's so true. You know, all that stuff. Uh, you know, it all it's all man, I could have swore this candy bar used to be bigger. You know what I mean? Like all that sort of junk. Like, oh man, this box are, well, you know, even it's even like stuff is, uh, I used to buy, uh, like Gatorade zero to take when I would go like play volleyball or do something. And they used to be 32 ounce bottles. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden one day there were 28 ounce bottles, same price. So they're 12, 12 and a half percent less product. 12 and a half percent. He did the math. I just know some percentages, okay? <laughs> and they charged the same price. Didn't say a word about it. Didn't advertise it. Didn't do anything. Just all of a sudden, the bottles are smaller. And the only reason, like, like I was holding it, and I was like, God, this seems... Li-. But I had two, and I literally put them hand in hand. I'm like, these... Mu-. Just shrunk the product down. And this happened, And this happened like, bef- like before COVID. So th- this happens even when there's not a giant problem with inflation. They're just like, yeah, we'll just make a, pro- a smaller product, same price. Yeah, I feel you, and we're, like we're all feeling feeling the uh, the strains in certain uh, certain areas. I what I wonder is because I'm the big picture guy. I don't, I don't really think in, in smaller concepts like that, but I think it's like, what are these companies doing? What do they know that we don't? Is it the fact that we are seriously on the verge of a nuclear war? Because we are. China's at high alert. Russia's at high alert. Uh, Israel's at high alert. There's constantly just like these entities that we have befriended or that we have affiliations with. Like it's it's very close. Um, I heard something that uh that was said from uh President Biden where he says like I he says that his day is composed of literally trying to prevent nuclear war from happening on a daily basis trying to quell the uh, the animosities between two warring nations or trying to su- uh, support 
our quote unquote allies. Like how how close are we? And when it comes to nuclear war, what what else can you do but acquire funds, keep that money? What do, what do these companies know? Because somebody knows something. When people start hoarding cash to this extent, there's got to be something. Yeah, man. You something never, they know we, we know. The general public's the last one to find out. So we'll find out when it's too late. It's the goddamn Ethereans, you know. It's just the aliens. They're coming back. Coming okay. to get you. I'm telling you the truth. You're, you're being nice to them, so they're going to take you up. It's been just, a long time since I went off on a tangent, Jonas, like this. The just, aliens are coming back. Just remember the homie when you get taken to the mothership. Uh, well, yeah, 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 we'll see what we can do for you. All right. We'll see what fine. we can do. Anyways, that's all the time we have today's episode. Go to thecrazytown.com. Subscribe for Jonas. Do you think? Oh, yeah.